So Vapi just released the MCP server and I'm going to show you how to install it on cursor and a little demonstration to show you how it works. Uh, hey, can you call me and just uh, tell me a punny joke, please? And you can use the same phone number as before. Thank you. There we go. I'm getting a call now. Hello there. I'm calling to share a different punny joke with you as requested. Hope you're ready for another laugh. Yes, I'll shoot. Great. Here goes. Why don't skeletons fight each other? Because they don't have the guts. Hope that brought a smile to your face. Have a fantastic day. Yeah, thank you, but. You're welcome. Bye bye and have a wonderful day. It took maybe less than 10 seconds to do the whole thing from assistant creation to typing in the initial two second, uh, two sentence line to call me and also provided with a number. Um, and now I'm going to show you on how to install this thing on your cursor so you can try it for yourself. You will open up your cursor account. You will get your options to open up the project. I'm going to open project. I have a folder called cursor projects. It's empty right now. Create a new file. Let's call it VAPI MCP. Then select folder and it will open up a new project for you. Up, go to the right hand side, you'll see a little gear. You can click on this, open up uh, the cursor settings or the other shortcut is shift control and j and that open also opens that up like so you'll click on the mcp part and you've got a blue button here click on this and now you get an option to put in your mcp servers the first thing that you will try is to directly just take this thing that they've got in the github copy go back to cursor paste that in You'll come back into your VAPI account. So you go org settings and then API keys right here. Uh, you want to always create a new key, especially with our clients, we just to be add an extra layer of safety. So you copy that. And in this particular case, I'm going to uh, paste that in directly into here and com press control S or go file and then save. Uh, once you've done this, all you have to do is now close your cursor and it just reopen that up now if you go into your settings go into mcp this should now be enabled um once you've got this you can now type in hey can you find me the list of tools that you have and you just ask it that and now it should and now it did tell me that it's got the MCP uh, VAPI tools there. So uh, you can also hover over these and it will tell you exactly what each one of them does. So, um, <clears throat> but if for some reason this isn't working for you because uh, if this is coming up as red. So the other kind of JSON that, that worked for me was this one as well. So if the first one that we pasted in didn't work for you, maybe try this one. If that didn't work, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'd like to help you, uh, you know, set that up, especially because you're most most likely here just because you want to just try it out and see what the hell this is about. Once once you've got this, you can do exactly what I did at the start of the video and do a whole bunch of other cool things. Like, for instance, you can add a file here. I'm just giving you guys ideas. You can add in a file here with all the prompts that you've written before, and then when you give it instructions here, you can actually ping it this. We can direct the agent here to use all your prompts you've created before and then use those prompts, the style structures to then create you an agent in VAPI. That way you don't have to spend time writing prompts all the time within VAPI. Um, and why would you want to kind of use this stuff? I would say at the moment, it's good just to play around with. Uh, I wouldn't use it in production at all. But it's good because you can get access to all these different API calls and tools. Uh, without actually needing to jump into the API documentation and having to read all those yourself and understand it all. Uh, this MCP server, which basically just hosts uh, all these tools for an AI to use, um, it, it takes care of all that for you. But that's actually also the downside because um, because an AI is taking control and using all those tools and deciding when to execute them. Um, I don't think it's ready for production yet. Um, all the projects that we've been creating for clients, they actually just use PY code and no AI in it 
in it whatsoever, just to just so that we can have 100% uptime, accuracy, and re reliability, and speed as well. All right, thank you, and I'll see you guys in the next one.